Hi everyone in Floss Tube land. I'm Karen Combs and this is Floss Tube number six. You might notice something a little different. We're in my sewing room and I told you the last video we we're going to try to go in here and here we are. Now this is going to be a little different video because I'm not going to have a lot of fancy editing that my husband usually does because he's tied up on another project. So we're just gonna wing it and hopefully it will all work out. Um, you may see me take a sip of tea now and again. I've got a little bit of a, a horse throat, so um, that might help. But I've got a lot of things to share with you. In the last video, I had just come back from Sampler Symposium and still just so enjoying. <laughs> it was just great, the people I met. Oh, it was wonderful. So what I want to show you today is I'm going to show you some things that I've worked on, but let's see, it's two weeks ago now, was my birthday week. And I guess women usually don't tell their age, but I was 66 and I thought, well, a couple videos ago I had shown you the different projects I was thinking about working on this year, which I think was a total of six. Well, that was silly because... There are so many more things I want to work on. So after I got back from Sampler Symposium and I was spreading everything out and kind of looking at my purchases and, and matching linen that I had purchased with some charts I had here, and I started thinking, what if I do six starts on my birthday week? So that's one just about every day. So that's what I did. So I'll be showing you the six starts, uh, showing you works in progress, showing you what's on my radar that I am waiting to get some of the floss for. And then I've got a couple of other things to share with you and I have a finish, yay. So let me get that. So the finish that I have is, I started it on Christmas Eve day not Christmas Day, because it was on a Sunday, um, and we were busy Christmas Day, so that, well, on, and Christmas Eve, you know, you're kind of busy too, so that I'll start at Christmas Eve Day. And this is one I've wanted to do for a while. And you know how it is, you think, yeah, I wanna do that. And sometimes you just need to start it, because that's all it took. This is by Threadworks Primitive. And it is Christmas tide. Now, you see, you can see that. I'll hold it. It is just the sweetest little design, and I just loved it. And so I used the called for flosses, which I still have in my bag here because I was going to share them with you, even though it is finished. So here are the flosses, and I have my handy dandy board and actually this is a flannel covered board that I use when I'm quilting to lay things out on but it works great for this so there are the flosses um, you can see and let me just take a look here I tell you it's Weeks Dye Works Gentle Art Classic Color Works and I did not change anything so that is the floss and here it is and let me see, I've got on my book here, see if I wrote down, it was done on 36 count milk and honey, which I love this color. So here it is. And I'm not sure if I'm going to finish it in a pillow or in a mantle, for the mantle. Let me hold it back so you can see it. Now hold it close so you can see it close up. It is just so sweet. And I loved, loved, loved working on it. Once I started, I did not put it down. I just kept working on it. Look at those little houses. And this is what is so cute about it. Look at this little salt box on either end. Then I realized, and you'll see this if you go to my Instagram page, which is just Karen D. Combs. And I think it's on my YouTube channel page, but I'll also link it in the description. Look at this little house. This is, do any of you remember the 
apartment 56 houses. Well, my mother collected those. She liked, oh, I can't remember. I think it was Snow Village. And I had a few New England Village. Well, this is from the New England collection. And it's, let's see, it says quilt shop. Fabric shop. Sorry, I don't have my glasses on. Fabric shop and post office. Well, doesn't that look, look at the little detail. Doesn't that look like one of the little houses on Christmas tide. And so when I took a picture of it, when I was working on it, I did put this little house with it. So that is my finish. And I'm trying to decide exactly how to finish it. I'm not sure yet, but I just loved it. So I finished that and it, I think it was about a week, just a week's worth of stitching, finished that and I thought, I think I remember telling you I was going to start Live Simply New Year's Day. Well, I finished this, oh, it was before New Year's, and I just wanted to keep working on houses. For some reason, I just loved it so much. So what I did is I pulled out my Houses of Hawk run hollow and i know many of you have seen this some of you have done it i started this last summer each one of the houses takes about for me i'm not the not a super fast stitcher about a month if i'm working on it so well there's 12 houses i should have it done in a year well that's not going to happen because i'm working on other stuff so I have finished two, uh, finished uh, this one and this one, and I had not started the third. So on New Year's Day, I thought, I'm just going to scrap the live simply. I'm not going to do that yet. I want to work on some houses. So I pulled it out, and here it is. Oh, it's so pretty. Just love these. So here's the, I'm gonna just take a peek and see what you're seeing. So those are the houses and kind of doing it blind here. So I'm working on the bottom here. Let me pull my board up again. Bottom of the house and I think I've made a mistake somewhere in here. So I'm having to kind of Take something out as I'm filling it in to get it to work exactly right. But look at this. Look at the second one. Oh, just pull them up here. I just love them. I know they take a long time, but they're so beautiful. And who cares? It's, it's the process as well as the finished product. Just love it. So that one, I'm using the called for flosses, which I'm using DMC because here they all are in this bag. So I know I priced, um, well, I think the pattern also gives you the option for silk. I priced that and went, uh, no, not this time. Um, I would love to do it in silk, but it was gonna be like $300 in just the silk. So I thought, no, we'll do it in DMC. So here's the list, is that it? Actually, it's double. I, I There's a ton of floss in this. So I have the DMC, I have them. These are the bags or the pieces, but how I have them, and this is this was before I knew about floss drops and all of that, but this is what I did. I just got this at Hobby Lobby. Many of you have seen this. It has a spot for your needle. And I just wrote in pencil what each color was. Now you would have thought I would have done it in numerical order, and I did not. So I just have to kind of jump around, but I did it in pencil so I can erase it and reuse it again. So there are two cards. Full of floss. This is kind of all tangled up. But these are 
all the colors. So I just pull out some of it and I have the rest in the bag. So when I'm ready, I can, can just reload it if I need it. Um, and this is done. The color that I'm using is, I've got extra piece here of what I'm using. Um, so I got platinum, which it just, when I think of platinum, I think of like platinum blonde and it's really just a beautiful light tan. So let's see, that's coming up pretty true to color. And the floss on it just looks beautiful. So let me hold that up again. So I, I spent, well, probably until I went to Sampler Symposium. So a couple of weeks working on the third house. I think I had, I think I had finished the second. So just working on the third because I had just fallen in love with the houses on Christmas tide. And I thought, well, I'm not, I'm not ready to not do houses. So let me just work on houses of, well, here it is. I just want to call it something different than it is. Houses of Hawk Run Hollow, and that's by Carriage House Sampling, which I oh, love their stuff. And let me just hold that up so you can see it. And oh, just so nice. So that's one I worked on. So now we're up to when, let's see, that was right before I went to Sanford Symposium. So on the plane, I did work on, and also in the motel room, I did work on Harriet Salt, which at Sampler Symposium, um, they, we had an opportunity to do show and tell, and I had laid out um, a couple of my three-dimensional optical illusion quilts, because several people had quilts there. So I had those, and one of them they displayed on the podium. And, and if I think about it, I'll put a picture on Instagram from that. But they asked me to come up and talk about it. And then I also had Harriet Salt. And what I mentioned is for decades, well, decades ago, I did counted cross stitch back in the 80s. And I also was doing quilting. Well, then my career went into quilting. So I did that pretty exclusively until just a few years ago. So what I said is, what do you do after 40 years of not doing counted cross stitch? And as soon as you get back into it, what do you do? You start with Harriet Salt on 56 count linen, <laughs> which is true. That's exactly what happened. So I was able to get this some of this line done. And I'll just bring it up here so you can see now I'm doing something a little different. I am on every other line. I am using a darker silk or a darker red so that, let me get my board, so that the initials are highlighted. So the first line, I have my initials. Second line, I have nothing, which I did that for a couple reasons. One is it broke it up a little bit so that it wasn't every line, which is true. Design-wise, it does make it look a little better. But you wanna know why I had to start doing it every other line? Because I forgot. So I got to the second line and I got somewhere over in here and I thought, oh, I didn't do the darker red, so we'll do it every other line. So the second line has my husband's initials. So that is Harriet Salt. So that is done on 56 count. So I think, I can't remember where I was uh, the last time I showed this, probably somewhere on the second row. So I've gotten down to the third row and um, it's coming along, but it is on 56 count. And how do you how do you stitch on 56 count? Magnification. We talked about mag eyes. I use that. I also have very high powered readers. Um, I have some that are four strength, 
because normally just for reading, I use 1.25, but for this, I use four, and I even bought some six if I need it for the 56 count. I don't yet, but I did purchase that. And you just got them on Amazon. I'll put a link to it. These are the six. So they just came in a box with about three or four of them for the case. And I'll put the link to that. So if you're looking for some very strong readers, I purchased four, strength four and strength six. And so far the four is working well. And I also use the mag eyes too. So kind of using both. And here are the two threads. I know in one of the previous videos I mentioned that, but those, the dark one is for the initials of the family, just to personalize it. And then uh, this one is the one I'm using every time. So it's uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. let's see, twenty four ninety nine. That's the lighter red. And the darker is Averisois, uh, is it 103? And it's color 335. So those are the two. So I thought that was a nice um, personalization for it. And Harriet Salt is will be a long-term project just like the Houses of Hawk, Hawk Run Hollow. I'll work on it um, from time to time, but I did work on it quite a little bit while at Sampler Symposium. And then I also worked on Quaker Dwelling during the symposium, and this got so much attention, which I guess when I switched the color of the linen, I didn't think much about it. I, you know, when when you're a quilter, you switch things all the time, and I just thought, oh, I really like this darker linen. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is the pattern. Let me take a sip here. Is Quaker Dwelling by Kathy Barrett. And I did use the called for uh, needlepoint silk. I did use those, which That's the list of the colors. And the difference, you can see it's on white linen or a light linen. What I did is I used, you know, this is gonna crinkle, I'm not gonna take it out. It's Weak Dye Works 36 Count Havana. It's a beautiful golden brown. And it was, I have it on stretcher bars or roller bars because the Weeks linen is a little bit, it's not really soft, but it works for me better to put it on a roller frame. So that's how I had it and I was working on it. And I had more people come over and say, what linen is that? Because the colors just pop. Now I've got quite a bit done on this and let me hold it up and then I'll get my board too. So here it is. And I'm just doing the mortar. So it is making the colors just pop. And getting the door done. Let me put it on the board here. <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry for the coughing. <coughs> I should have got a cough drop before I started. Right, here it is. So I've got a good part of it done. And I worked on the mortar during Sampler Symposium because I didn't have to count. I just had to fill in. So when I go to StitchCon, I think I'll bring this and keep working on the mortar, do the counting here, but then fill in those things and the door too. The door is red. Let me pull that. Here are the silks right here. The door is this color. Let me get my board here. It's this gorgeous red. 
that's what the door is going to be. And so what I did for these silks, I had somebody ask me about that. I put them on floss drops. Now, I did a couple of things. One is I pulled them off. Well, I put two holes. There was one hole. I added a hole. And then I also put the number on the back and then I taped the wrapper. And I did that so I can pull this off and reuse it or, you know, wrap it back up if I don't use a whole skein. The other thing, and I know this is something that some people do and some people don't. Some people want to keep floss in uh, the silk in bags. Well, I started like this and mostly this doesn't go very many places with me. It mostly stays here, so it just kind of hangs there. But some, uh, and I don't know who gave this to me. If you if you watch this, put put your name uh, in the comments. This lovely woman that was sitting over one table over from us at Sampler Symposium gave us these thread beds, and I thought, well, that's perfect because I'm going to put the silk in here, so when it's in my bag it's protected. So I know they're also silk bags. I don't have one of those, so this was a good option. And I can then just put it, snap it shut, and put it right into my project bag. So it's all protected. So that is something I worked on the Quaker Dwelling, and I don't anticipate finishing it soon because I have several trips later this year that it will be a good project to do some of that fill-in work. I think the windows are filled in. They are windows, and I may leave those windows unfilled in. I don't know. I haven't decided. We can see that beautiful red door. So that is Quaker Dwelling. So those are the things, look here, that I worked on while, um, well, between the last video not the sampler symposium video, but the one in December. And now, except for the new starts. So let me show you those. So before we go into the starts, yeah, I wanna show you one thing, and I know many of you have seen this, but I'm not a big journal keeping person. I never have been. Maybe when I was a teenager I did, but that's about it. And many of you have the Book of Days. I did take it to Office Max and I had them add in some heavier cards, uh, heavier paper in the back, put a heavy cover on it, put a see-through protective cover on it, and a comb binding. And I think it was, uh, I how many extra pages I put in there, five or six, maybe 10. But all of the extra pages plus the front and back and the comb binding was $4. So I just went up to the desk where they make copies and told them what I wanted. So they did that. And so what I've been doing, and I did do the stickers because, and again, I've never done that, never been a scrapbooker, never done stickers, but it's kind of fun. So here is January. And I put the starts here. Also put when I filmed the last floss tube and what number it was, what I finished. And then on each day wrote down what I worked on and, and other things too, because I've been doing my uh, teaching with quilt guilds and lecturing via Zoom. So I put those in there, put when we went to Arizona and Sedona, and just put different things in there. And then, so here's February. So I don't have as much in there and I just noticed I did not put yesterday or today. So I need to put that. But the back part, let me show you the extra pages. So, 
right, this is one of the extra pages. I just spelled out starts with stickers and I'm putting what I started, actually I put what I did in 2022 because I didn't have one of these, but also 2023. And then I left a second page for that. Um, I put haul, although starting to write it down, it's like, do I really want it written down? <laughs> Proof. <laughs> then some people that I met and their Instagram handles so I can find them. Oh, let's see, I have a couple extra pages. And let's see, I think that's it. So I left some of it blank. Yeah, I left some of it blank. This is the last one, just put some of the big stickers there. But I left some of it blank so I can fill things in. But the starts have been helpful because then if I'm trying to remember what I did, it's all written down right here. So let's take a look, because I was going to do six starts through the year, and I ended up doing six starts my birthday week, which was two weeks ago. And I meant to do a video a week ago, but things were crazy here, so that, well, we'll just do it this week. So one of the starts that I did was supposed to be the New Year's Day start, the one that I showed you and I really like it. It's by Willow Hill Sampling. Live simply. Simply live. See, this is a PDF, so I just printed it off. And it uses... Uh, well, it uses five, because I have here, I made a card. So I took cardstock, and on my little printer, Printed this out, scaled it down, glued it on the cardstock, punched holes in it, and then copied the symbols of the colors and put them on the back. So it makes it very easy. So there's five colors. Started on that, and the linen that I used, I did not write down. All right, there's so much for the well thought out plans. I'll have to look that up. I, I know I wrote it down somewhere and it calls for 36 count. And I know that the color it called for, which I think was Weeks Cocoa. I had some of that, no, it was hazelnut linen. I had a Cocoa Weeks and it was just too dark. And this one, it's a swag art. I'm guessing, oh, I don't know if it's 40 count, I'm gonna have to look it up, but I got that much done. And I like it, I'm, I will finish it, but I just wasn't that into it. And I don't know why, I started it. As you can see, I got one of the letter, one of the words done. I got some of the um, design up here done, but I just, maybe it was a lot of counting and I couldn't get into a good rhythm. I don't know. So I worked on that, I think that was an afternoon. Might've been uh, two days working on it, you know, or two evenings. And I just thought, there's my start. It's good, it's a start. So that's start number one. And start number two, we had talked about this. Now this is a project bag I made and I'm gonna have to practice some more. It's, I thought it was pretty good, but I messed up one spot, which you probably can't tell, but I was not happy with the spot I messed up after I did it. I thought, why did I do that? But it doesn't matter, you really can't tell. But this is some William Morris fabric that I had. So the start that I have, so this was, again, my birthday week's start. And this one is Coffee Quaker. 
by Heart, Heart String Samplery. And you know, who doesn't love a Quaker uh, sampler? So this one, I kind of played around with the different linens and laid lin linens out and laid the floss on it because I just wasn't sure about it. It calls for 40 count. And let's see, did I use, I actually ended up using the called for linen. I had something else and I switched it to the called for. So it's R&R &R, 40 count stars hollow blend. So that's the linen. And I did use the called for floss, which is Weeks and Gentle Arts and Classic Color Work. So let me show you the flosses. So these are the flosses. Look at this bright green in there. I think that's grasshopper. So to test it, of course I ended up using the called for and it was fine, but when I was testing it for some other colors, I laid the floss down on it. And in a little bit, I'll show you another idea about that. But this was one afternoon and a little bit of an evening. So it's a start. I won't call it a work in progress yet. It kind of is, but it's a start. So this is the Star Hollow Blend and Coffee Quaker. So you can see I got, uh, did I just hold that upside down? I think I did. I got that much, that corner done. So I was very pleased with it and I love the needle minder. It's a coffee bean that I found but I thought the colors really popped on that. And let me just lay it out. They really are gorgeous, you can see. Because you, you want it to really show. So there they are. So that one, because I was starting six starts, one each day, that was one e afternoon and evening after I had finished some other work. I thought, well, good, I'm going to start that. And I picked this one because, again, who doesn't love a Quaker sampler? And it's coffee-based, which I love my coffee. I really do. That's just the way it is. So I did see a little saying or some something someone said the other day. They said, I've just realized... It's not that I like coffee, it's that I like cream. And I thought, ooh, that's me, ooh, you know, that cappuccino, love that. So that is, let me put it back in the bag. So that is the two, second start that I did. Now the third start, this one, this is a PT bag. And there was a lovely lady named Lou that gave me this little strawberry at Sampler Symposium. Thank you, Lou. I love it. It's on this project bag. And this was one of our projects from Sampler Symposium. This is Sarah Milthorpe. Let me pull the, the things out. And if you remember the last video, I showed the beautiful way it was presented to us in a package. Let me see if this is going to shine. There we go. So that was one of the projects we were given at Sampler Symposium. We were given the linen, which was creme brulee. We had a choice between several counts. I think I chose 40 count. Let me look at my notes. Yes, 40 count creme brulee. And it does have the 103 silks in it. There's 15 spools, but this isn't all of them. Let me get the other one. All right, so here's the rest of them. And I'll show you what this is in just a minute. But you may have seen online several people talking about the creme brulee linen that they received was really dark. And so one of the gals sitting near us was working on it and I asked her about it because it was like 
the next day. And I said, oh, are you working on it? That looks lighter. She said, I took it upstairs when we finished class and put it in the sink with a little cool water and a drop of, um, I think she might have used soap, and rinsed it, and it lightened it up. So I did the same thing here at home, just a drop of detergent, actually very gentle soap, and cool water, and just kind of let it soak for a minute, and then hung it up to dry. So here's the back. So it's much, even though it looks pretty splotchy, it's much less dark. And actually, this is the front, which is lighter. So this is what I, how much I got done, an afternoon and an evening. And I just love how it's looking. Let me pull the chart up again. So I got this, this little bit done right here, right up here in the border and love this little needle minder. It's a little teacup. Can you see it? Let me get it close. There we go. Little teacup. And how I have my threads or my silks, the 103s, I had pulled the colors I'd be using for right in here. And these are the ones I'm not using right now. So the ones I am using, I put in this. So I could put it right on my table and just see which one, and I might have even put them in order, I think. But what this is, is a lipstick holder. I found it at a vintage store or a junk store or Goodwill. I think it was um, made of Ben Goodwill. It was a dollar. It's perfect. You can find these brand new on Amazon. I think they're $6, but it, this one holds 12. So I thought, well, that's perfect. So that I can have right on my table when I'm working on it. And the colors are just gonna be beautiful. Now, where's my board? That's already buried, so you can see. And I kind of positioned it because the house, let me show you the chart again. The house is toward the bottom or kind of the middle right in there. So when I laid out the linen, the house is gonna be right kind of here in the middle. So that's start, what's that start three? And here's my thread bed with the little extra bits of silk. So I've got them and I'm just using again, these colors, so I've got the little bits right in here protected. But that's gonna be a fun uh, stitch. And the 103s I've used one other time and that was on the um, Harriet, Harriet Salt. And then we also got the card. So I have all of those things in my project bag. And where is that other thing I just thought of that goes with this? I have a basket right here. Is it here? Uh, well, I'll think of it, but that is gonna be fun. So I'll put the link to Amazon for this, so if you're curious about it, you can see. Let me set that there. So that is start, lost track, is that four? I think it's four. Now this next one, I was walking through the attic and they had a display case for all different patterns from Scarlet House. It was a cabinet, a glass front rounded cabinet, and they had a little um, design in there on a board that I just fell in love with. So I took a picture and took it up to the desk or to the checkout desk and asked, do you have that? And they said, if, you, if we do, it's over there. So I looked through and found it. So this was the fifth start. And this is the Scarlet House, Bonnie's Bittersweet. And I just fell in love with it. it 
Hey, I was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven colors. So mostly weeks and classic color works. So I did, while I was at the attic, pull the colors. Let me pull those out. Now I did do some changing because if you look at the pattern, do you see how that little coverlet looks lighter blue? But on the chart, it's gunmetal. It's like, I don't know about that. So I changed that to Classic Color Works Old Blue Jean. So let me show you that. I think that's the only change that I made. But I went back and forth and back and forth, and I thought, oh, no, I really like, and actually, there we go. I pulled a couple blues. And I think old blue jean is what I'm using for it, which is, I think it's this one right here. So that just, Gave it such a nice look because I really wanted that lighter blue. So again, I worked on this for an afternoon and an evening and I put it on fiber by a whim, 40 count stone. So let me hold that up. It's a pretty big piece of linen. I mean, it's like huge. And the piece isn't that big. So I'm just using a corner. Okay. And on this one, I did not start on the top left. I started on the bottom because that way I could fill it in. So that went pretty quick for just an afternoon and evening. So what I got done, you can see I got Oh, that whole corner right there done. And I think that that color, the old blue jean, is similar to what the pattern looks for, or looks like, rather than the gun metal. So that's personal choice. I just thought that coverlet in a lighter blue would be nice. And this linen, it's called stone, but it's, it's not gray, it's kind of gray. It's a gray blue, or it's a warm blue, I should say. And here's the, the flosses on it. This is one of the floss drops I've made from an antique um, spool top. It's, cl it's clip art. I did not destroy <laughs> a spool. I wouldn't do that. So that is start number five. And oh, I know what I was going to show you with the Harriet Salt. I'll show you that when we talk about purchasing, which I have a few things. The lipstick holder was one of them. Let me put all these things back in here so I don't mix them up. So the last start I had was something that I packaged up or kitted up last summer, let me take a drink here. And I was going to have knee surgery last summer and I knew I would be incapacitated for a little while. It ended up only being about a week. Uh, I thought I was gonna have a longer recovery, like six weeks on crutches. And so I thought, well, I have to have these projects already. So I kitted this up. And then I didn't get to it because I was up and getting around just fine in a matter of a few days or a week, which, and a month of physical therapy, but uh, I digress. Um, so I had this all kitted and it, I'm just getting it ready. It took me a little while to get all of the flosses and get everything and the linen. And then I had to make some changes, which I'll show you. But it is, once I started working on this, and it's been, I think, two weeks now, that's all I've worked on. It is, 
Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. I know that you all know about Blackbird Designs and how they just, just love them. And as soon as I started stitching on it, that's all I wanted to stitch on. And that's all I've stitched on since then. So it is Humming of the Bees. And that's what I'm working on right now. And the, the um, linen that I'm using is, uh, I've got it right here. I think it's Fiber on a Whim. It's 40 count. It is parchment. So here is the linen and it's not showing true. It's almost like bee's knees kind of color. Let me see if I can put it on here and see if it'll show, then I'll show you the what I've done. That's pretty accurate to color, like that. And here are the flosses. And I did make some changes, but the flosses are right here. They're just beautiful. But the problem that I had is I had three flosses that when I laid them on the linen, they completely disappeared. Completely. I even stitched some thinking, oh, it has to show up. It did not. And so I'll tell you a little trick that what you can do when you are trying to decide if it shows or not. Don't take the skein and lay down because the skein is very thick and it's a lot of color. But when you stitch on it, you're only going to see one strand. So if you're trying to judge if something shows up, I'm going to show the back here. Take one strand and lay it on the linen. And you can even take a step back to see if it shows up. You can see how, even though that's one strand, that's the back, uh, it shows up. So let me show you the changes that I made. So this, now I just have this random, this must be from the Quaker. Oh no, all of a sudden I have two and I only have one project bag in front of me. All right, it has to go on one of those down there. So this, um, I have the linen and then I'll show you the changes. Where was that? Are you kidding me here they are? All right, so the, I don't wanna show the back of this, this is my working copy. But the changes I made, it called for Harvitz Basket, Putty, and Sage. Um, those, Harvest Basket is uh, Gentle Arts. Putty and Sage are Weeks. Beautiful colors, but on my linen, they simply, and my linen color, they simply disappeared. So let me show you what I did instead. Let me get that. Okay, so there's the linen, and here's putty. Now, it looks pretty good right there, except when you got to one strand, it it was it completely disappeared. So I changed it, because I wanted this similar color, but just a little darker. I changed it to green tea leaf. The other color that disappeared was sage. here. And again, it looks like, an, well, it's a problem, but it really did disappear. I changed that to oil cloth. So just a similar color family, just a little darker. And then the harvest basket is practically the same color as this, even though it's might show up a little different. I changed that to old oak tree. So it took the same color and I even looked at the color with my readers on, my strong readers, to see what other colors were in there. So you can see similar tone, similar family, just a little darker. So that is a putty change to green tea leaf. And that's only because the linen I chose. 
Here is the oil cloth that I changed to instead of sage. That is really close to the color of the linen. And then, and so is Harvest Basket, changed that to Old Oak Tree. So like similar beautiful golden, just a little bit darker. So those are the changes that I made and I just made a note on my working copy of my pattern. And now I'll show you what I've done so far. I even still have my hoop on it. Let me take that off. This is an old Duchess hoop that I've been using and it's six inch and it just, it feels so good to work with. So here it is. And then where's my board? Let me put it on there. So this is working on it mostly in the evening, a couple of weeks. Colors blowing out a little bit. So I just finished down here and I'm working on that. And there's a V keep that I want to get to. So that's humming of the bees on parchment, fiber on a whim, making three changes to the called for uh, colors. So let me, I don't want to mix this up, and I still don't know where this one goes. Heart door caper. Huh. I don't know. Must be one of my things down there that I showed you and did not put back together. So the humming of the bees was the sixth start, and I just got stuck. I'm just going to keep working on it. So I want to show you a couple things that I've purchased, and then probably what I'm going to start next, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, I'm still waiting on some things. Uh, floss colors that have been out and I want to show you a couple things I've purchased and then a couple of tools that I found very handy and a book that I just purchased. So here's the book. It's called Woman's Work by, oh, it is Pamela Parnell, Parmel, Woman's Work, Embroidery in Colonial Boston. The this is all embossed. It is an absolutely stunning book cover. And it covers the work of six women and their work. Just kind of scroll through. And if you enjoy history, there'll be a lot of history in here. And it is also well documented. Let me go back to that. my librarian days and show you this way but all of the notes so it's almost like well I guess it is a scholarly work all of the notes but it is beautifully done so that's what I wanted to share with you someone else shared this with me and I think I found it on Amazon or uh, an online book seller so I wanted to mention that because if you enjoy reading um, history, especially something that's well documented, that's what this is. So a couple things that I found, I keep forgetting. I went to the, remember that uh, junk store, antique store, vintage store, whatever you want to call it, where I found my lipstick holder for a dollar. I also was looking for a salt shaker. But I wanted a pretty one. I think this was a dollar fifty, might have been seventy-five cents. But I thought I like the color. I like the uh, color. I like the design. And of course, there's the topic. It's pretty big. It could have been a sugar shaker. 
but what I'm going to use it for is to put some counting pins in, and these were given to us at Sampler Symposium by the Jersey Girls. So that, I can actually put on my little table back there with my cabinet, is a little vignette. And the other thing I found at the vintage store was a spool, and I liked the top. That decoration is a little wider at the bottom. And I just had it sitting on my table, and I thought, hmm, you know what? This might make a really nice little holder. And so we were given this mini McBean scissor fob at Sampler Symposium, so I put it on my red scissors. But I just think that is so pretty, especially with Valentine's Day coming up. So I thought, well, this is a little vignette that I'm going to put on my table. So this was found at the vintage store, and so was this. I can't remember how much this was, but it wasn't very much. It wasn't just a dollar, but um, a few dollars, I think. And they actually had a couple more. I'm thinking about going and getting a couple more of them so I'd have the matching ones. And then the other thing that I purchased in the last month is I've been looking for vintage hoops and I found someone that had an entire set of princess hoops. Let's see how I can show you. So what that it came as a whole set so I purchased the whole set and they're in beautiful shape. Here's the four inch. So Princess Hoop has this arc here. So it allows it to open up. So this is the four inch and the five inch. And the wood has such a beautiful patina on it. And where is the stamp? You can see the stamp right there that says Princess. So this is the four inch and the five inch, and then the six inch. See if I can do this, and then the seven inch, let's see, three, four, five, no, this must be the six inch, and the seven. So there's one, two, three, four, five five of them and I just love the fact that she put them all together in a set but there's one more and this is a five by nine oval again beautiful shape just the patina is so nice on it so that is the princess hoop set that I purchased uh, in the last few weeks so that, that's pretty much, because I had purchased things at the attic. Um, so I thought, well, don't get any more of that stuff right now, <laughs> but later. But the uh, couple things I wanted to show you before I show you something that's on my radar, and then we'll finish up. I am going to do a tip video, but I didn't want to put it on this one, because I'm not going to edit this. I'm just going to upload it. But I will be doing, probably in the next day or so, a tip video. Just some things I found that were handy or helpful about your needle and your thread. But let me show you the things that... We all have things we love to use. And these are my, I think they're 3-inch Ginger. Where's that board? Curved scissors. Oh, that doesn't look very good. I just hold them up like this. They've got that little edge to them, and they're extremely sharp. And these are the ones I keep grabbing. So I will put a, um, a link to those so you can see them. I don't even know where I got these. They were in my supplies, my quilting supplies, in you know, one of my drawers with all different scissors I had. And that curved edge, I thought, well, that's perfect because then it's not going to catch something it shouldn't. And they're super sharp. Got a nice action to it. So these are something that I grab all the time. They are Ginger 
uh, curved embroidery scissors. I think they're three inch, but I'll put the details in the description. And the other thing that I found this week, not this week, this month, my daughter actually purchased for me for my birthday because I put it on my wish list on Amazon. And a friend of mine showed me this. That's why I put on, on the wish list. You're going to think this is so silly. But it's, I keep grabbing it. Do you ever get cold hands? Sometimes when I'm working, especially in the winter, and I'm working on the computer or I'm sitting reading a book or I'm doing something, my hands get so cold. Not all the time, but they get cold. This is, it looks like a bug. This is a hand warmer. You can, it's rechargeable. I think it's this end. You just plug it in to recharge, to charge it and recharge it. And you just push the button. Let's see. Hold it down till it lights up. One dot there means it's, it's got three settings. It gets hot on the top and it comes with two of them. So if you're somewhere where it's really cold and you wanna put your hands in your pocket, it will keep it warm. But right here, it is so warm and you can just hold on to it like this. Or sometimes, I don't know, sometimes I'll get this joint that will be a little fussy, you know, and I kind of work in it. I'll just rub. It's nice and warm and I only have it on the first setting. So you can just hold it there for warmth, but they are, little rechargeable hand warmers that look like a little bug. <laughs> but it's got three settings. It doesn't vibrate or anything like that. It just is warm. So she got that for me for my birthday. And I thought, well, that's perfect because when I'm working and my hands get cold, sometimes, you know, they really ache when they're cold. So I can just hold on to it or just get my fingers warmed and then recharge it, which I haven't had to do. I charged it the first time and haven't had to recharge it. So let me look. The only other thing I'm going to show you is what I'm waiting on some floss colors. I thought I had everything and I don't. So I'm waiting on that. But this is something I saw on someone's Instagram. And I know it's one you know. But the colors were so gorgeous. And this is the uh, project bag that I have it in. Do I have who it's by? And just put one of the little scissor fobs on there. But this is by Blackbird Designs. So this is the one. I don't know when I'm going to start it, but pretty soon, I think. Although in March, I think I'm gonna do start that Celtic band sampler right around uh, St. Patrick's Day. But this is the one I'm collecting for, which will be coming up here. Oh, joyous day. I just, I just love it. The colors are beautiful. I don't have them all yet. Can't remember, I thought I did. I can't remember which ones I'm missing, so. There's the colors. And the linen that I've selected, which I'll double check and make sure. Uh, it's 40 count Heartland. Oh, that's pretty. That looks gorgeous. I just love the colors. They just drew me right in. And one thing I'll mention to you when I'm checking colors, try to do it in natural light. So take it to the window. Um, fluorescent lights have a totally different color, kind of that, um, well, there's yellow lights, there's white lights, there's all kinds of lights. So if you're picking colors, I do this for quilting too, take the fabric, take the floss or the linen to the window in the natural light. You'll be surprised how much it will change. You can also, let's say you're going to make this and put it on the wall, a certain wall in your house. You're thinking, yep, that's where it's going to go. Check the linen and the floss there because that's the, the light or the colors are going to be, let's say it's in a hallway that doesn't have much light. Well, 
take it and hold it up in that spot. And you can even do what we talked about is just take strands so you can see how it looks. So I'm pretty sure that that's what I'm gonna use because boy, I like that. That looked really good on camera. This has got, is kind of, um, got a little bit of yellow. I know that everything just gets blown out. I know, let me try this. Worked pretty well when, hold it, there, that's actually pretty good. It's got just a little touch, kind of golden with a little peach maybe. Well, let's do it like this. That's good. You'll just see the top of me here. There we go. So, oh, joyous day. I think that is on the radar, um, but I think I'll start the band sampler. But what I plan to do is work on humming of the bees until I don't feel like working on it anymore, which I may totally finish it. Then I think I'm going to go to Bonnie's Bittersweet because that's little, and um, I could probably finish that in about a week. I think. So that's kind of my plan. Um, we'll see. Because my plan also was to do six starts this year. And I've done more than that already. So <laughs> that's just how that goes. <coughs> so I want to thank you for joining me today. Let me take another little sip. And I hope you've enjoyed this. Put in your comments what you think. I know it's a little different than the other videos that I did where I was switching between my cameras in my Zoom studio. But I thought this would give a little different look. Um, just let me know what you think. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that like, uh, you know, thumbs up, because that helps other people find it. So be sure to like the video, and if you enjoy this content, hit subscribe so you'll know when new videos come up. Mostly my floss tube will be just about cross-stitch, but I'm also a quilter, and you on my channel will see some quilting videos, and I've done playlists for each so that um, if you quilt, you can look at those. If you stitch, you can look at the floss tube. That's another question. Would you like to see some quilts in this or you want to keep it just stitching i you know it's kind of a work in progress i haven't really decided yet i'm thinking about it but we'll see um but please subscribe and hit that like button and i think i've already said that so i guess that's it i've got lots of stuff around me that i'm gonna clean up now but i will in the in the description of this video, put the different things we've talked about so you can find them. So thank you for joining me. We'll get this video uploaded hopefully tomorrow. Uh, this is the 10th, so hopefully it'll be up there on the 11th. And as I've said before, happy stitching, be well. Thank you for joining me.